Today we're going to learn about intervals. In the top left corner, put your name. Make sure that you always do this on every page. And today's date in the upper right hand corner as well. So today we're going to learn about intervals. This is part one, Roman numeral. In music, an interval is the distance between two notes. Distance between two notes, interval. And of course you could find that definition used in other ways. A melodic interval is the distance between two notes which are played one at a time. We're going to change this real quick to which instead of sitch. Put a W right there, which are played one at a time. Sometimes in band, we play a melodic interval. So whenever we play a melody, for example, Star Wars, ba 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 that's a fifth. Or in other words, this one down here, because the notes are five notes apart, and it has a certain sound to it. And so the distance between the notes are here to here. We call that melodic. A harmonic interval is the distance between two notes which are played at the same time. And so when we talk harmonic, we mean these guys down here. These are melodic, distance between them. And harmonic means that they're stacked, they're on top of each other. And when we play band music, obviously the more advanced literature is going to have more harmony in it. Okay, so we have different examples, including a second, a third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh. If we went eight notes, we'd call it the octave. Harmonic intervals, we call them the same thing, but they are stacked on top of each other in this case. So we would say that is a harmonic third. The interval between two identical notes is called a unison. So this is actually a distance too. So between, if we were to call this C one, this is one and one. So between one and one is a unison interval. The interview of an eighth is called an octave. So if we kept going up here on our seventh, we'd call it a octave. And of course you know that if you play your scales, and at this point I would hope you have done that. Down below, you need to identify the following intervals as melodic or harmonic. So very simple to do. In our first example here, this is going to be harmonic on the first one because the notes are right on top of each other. If the notes are not on top of each other and they go from left to right, as this does, then we're going to call it melodic, and we're going to put an M. So obviously, and I want you to draw an arrow if it goes like this, and you're going to write an M under it. If it's on top, we're going to circle it, and we're going to write an H. These two are stacked like that, that's actually harmonic, and they're stacked like that because if they were, if in this case that's an F and that's a G, if they were right on top of each other, you wouldn't be able to read it. So when you have a cluster like that, they tend to put one of the notes to the right. If we had another note, uh, then they would be stacked on top. For example, if I did this, if I put an A in here, that note would be there. But if I continued and I wanted it to be a B, as part of my harmonic chord, I would put this here to the right because it would cluster and so forth. Okay, this is obviously harmonic as well, and that's a seventh. Okay, below, name these melodic intervals. So the distance, and since they're melodic, we use red on this one, that means they go from left to right. So all you have to do is this, count. This is space, line. So we have line, space, line. That then is a third. Okay. And you could look up top to make sure that that's what you have. And right here, you can see that the notes are three apart. So in other words, there should be one note in between them. Let's double check and make sure that that is the case down below. Yep, there would be one note in between them. Okay. Here's another way to do it. Let's look at the lower note and then go up. G, A, B, C, D, E, F, or 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So the distance between that note and the next note is 7 notes. So we're going to write a 7th. 
And if we were to fill in space line, space line, all the way up to that F, we'd find that the notes are seven notes apart. Obviously, if we were one more, it'd be an octave. G to G would be an octave. So that's another easy way to look at it. All right, the next one that we have, we do have G to G. So you can count high to low or low to high. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And if it's the same note, it's going to be an octave or an eighth. So in this case, I want you to write octave. And we could put eighth under it just so that we understand it. Okay. B to G. So you have to count your ledger lines. B to C, D, E, F, G. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. So if we counted every note in between, you'd have a six. Piece of cake. Okay, I want you to do the last two on your own. And I'm going to move on to number three. And if you need to, you can pause the video to catch up. Number three, name these harmonic intervals. Harmonic meaning that they're stacked on top of each other and they would play at the same time. So we're going to count. C, D, E. Well, there's three notes there between C and E. So that is a third. And you could always look at the top for reference. If I were to scroll up here. Yep, there it is. So the exact one actually that we're doing right now. You'll notice that there's something in between, but they should look like this. Okay, let's go back down. We have B, I'm sorry, we're in bass clef, D, E, F, G, A, B. Or you can count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. All I'm doing is line, space, line, space, line, space. So between that we have six notes. So we're going to write a sixth. Thirds and sixes are your most common intervals and then octaves because they tend to make up basic harmony. Okay, this next one is not so common, but it does happen. They're stacked on top of each other. So between F and G, there's only one difference there, so we call that a second. You could also think of it as a second scale degree, if it were a scale. Okay, this next one, if it's the same, I want you to write unison. Okay, and I guess you can write first under it. Nobody really calls it that, but it's a unison. Just like an octave is an eighth, but we don't call it that. Okay. Next one. Line, space, line, space, or one, two, three, four. That should be four notes apart, so we're going to call it a fourth. And we'll do one more, and I'll let you do the last two. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, G to G would be an eighth, and it's down or I'm sorry, B to A would be, um, B to B would be an eighth, and down one note to the A makes it a seventh. So here we're going to write seventh. And I want you to do the last two on your own. So I'm going to be looking for these. As a matter of fact, I'm going to highlight them for you so you know that you need to do them. That's what I'm going to look for. And, of course, you should do the other stuff just to make sure that you understand it. Okay, next, write the indicated harmonic interval above the given note. So in this case, a fifth. They've given an example. We need to put a whole note. Use whatever rhythm they've given you, uh, whatever duration. So that should be five notes. One, two, three, four, five. Yes. Okay, here we have to go up a third. So a space would be a second. A line should be a third. Pretty basic. Unison. Okay, but if we're going to occupy the same space, we have to go to the right. Octave, if it's a G, it should be a higher G. And you could go back and count them. A second, we're not going to put it on top. We're going to put it just to the right. A fourth, line, space, line. A fifth. And so forth. So I want you to do once again the last two over here. You're gonna do this one and this one. And you're just gonna draw them in. 
Okay, the last one, write the indicated harmonic interval above the given note. So once again, we're doing a harmonic interval. I'm going to do the first one. We'd have a space and a line. A fifth, bring us to an F. So we did a bass clef, now we're going to do a treble clef. And honestly, the clef doesn't really matter because the interval is still the same on the staff, no matter which one you do. So one, two, three, four. This should put us on a D. A6 should put us on an a E. Unison, we're going to put it to the right. And seventh, remember we can go to an octave to an F and then go down one note. Because an octave is an eighth. Go down and you're on the seventh. And you're going to do the last two once again on your own. Should be a piece of cake, but this gets you to understand the definition of a melodic interval. What an interval is, number one, and then what a melodic versus a harmonic interval. When I tune bands, when we tune the band, sometimes I tune melodically and sometimes we tune harmonically, but we need to be able to listen either way. And when you get to more advanced stages, especially in high school, you need to be able to learn to listen uh, to harmonic intervals and be able to play harmonic intervals in tune, not just unisons. In middle school, I focus on being able to, to blend with your neighbors and play unison in tune. And throughout high school, you're going to have to play thirds and, and fifths and octaves and sixes in tune. And you'll actually hear Chewbacca between the intervals, between the instruments that are playing. And that could be a lot of instruments, that could be a few instruments, or it could be two instruments. And you just have to learn to listen. And it's a much deeper level of listening, which is why this worksheet is in here, to prepare you for that level of listening. And that's how a band can sound even better. So I hope you understand intervals.